my last journey into Star Trek the original series. Hello guys, welcome, or if you've already seen my channel before, welcome back, I am the Philadelphia Whovian, and if you've seen my channel before, you know I've literally done the insane thing of ranking, yeah, ranking all of the original Star Trek stories. But now I'm going to talk about that one thing I did not put into that ranking, which was the first initial pilot episode of The Cage. Yes, that is the original Star Trek pilot is The Cage. But after that happened, the studio did not really like the story, so Gene Roddenberry was ordered to go and make another pilot, and something happened in Star Trek that was quite unprecedented. A second pilot was allowed to occur. And that became known as Where No Man Has Gone Before. But those of people who've seen The Cage know that we've got an entirely different crew on this Enterprise than the crew we would go and have in Star Trek, the original series. The original crew that we have in this is Captain or Commander Pike. He's the captain of the Enterprise, so it's Captain Pike, who we'll go on to see later on in the new Star Trek movies, the ones with the Kelvin timeline, or the newer well, not new, new, but the newer ones, as well as with Star Trek Discovery, he's get his branch off story of Pike. And he's a very, you know, he's a character that's always rested in the back of people's minds. So he has something about him as a curiosity that we all have, and we do like Pike. But we end up with Kirk, which overall I am very happy we ended up with. Uh -huh. So Pike we have played by phenomenal actor Jeffrey Hunter, though at the end of the day, you know, I'll get back to, you know, Kirk instead. But still, right now we've got Jeffrey Hunter, the wonderful actor, playing Pike. He's the captain of the Enterprise. And then we have a doctor in this who is older than what we go on to have with Dr. McCoy, a.k.a. Bones. But also, number one is different. In this, Majel Barrett, the actress who would go on to play the nurse in the Star Trek original series, she was number one, and she was the, you know, second in command when the captain was not there. And then we also have Spock is, in fact, there. Yes, Leonard Nimoy was there as Spock, but he's slightly different than the Spock we would go on to have. You see, the way it was with Star Trek The Cage is that you have Leonard Nimoy as Spock, he is playing, you know, the eared, like the double eared and like, you know, the eyebrowed alien from Vulcan, but it is number one, the female Major Barrett. She is the one who doesn't have emotion, not because she comes from a species that doesn't have emotions, oh no, she's human, but she simply does not have emotion because she just prefers to have this kind of you know, I guess professional feeling or what they call professionalism when it comes to us women and have no emotions because that's what we think is professional. I don't, I don't know. I'll get back to that in a second. Okay, but the plot of The Cage is simply thus. It's a re became recycled. The Cage, the story, was recycled later on in the first season of Star Trek with a two-parter of The Menagerie. So you do see almost all the footage of what happened in The Cage, but you see it later on. Now, Captain Pike, he goes to a planet where there is a supposedly refugees or their survivors who've been surviving there on this planet and they are humans like us and they survive there for all these many years and there's one very beautiful woman who's there they all go down to this planet happy that there are survivors uh, but then it turns out it was all a mirage except for the woman and there are these species on this planet who deal everything like if they imagine it they can create it so they live in dreams and also the cage is this concept of they take different specimens, bring them onto the planet, or try to lure them to the planet so they can put them in cages like that of a zoo. But another reason why Pike was taken was because he was the perfect male specimen for this female they have so the female can breed. So it wasn't just for their own amusement, it was also for the procreation of this species. So the whole story, for lack of better terminology, I was going to give it to you straight. The story is about getting Pike, for lack of better terminology, horny enough to mate with this woman, but they give him all these dreams and put him through all these scenarios, these imagined scenarios, or throwbacks to his past to get him to bond with this female. The first time we see him with the woman is she's wearing this incredibly beautiful, like, you know, I guess like classical gown, and she's being chased by this creature who he defeated 
previously in his last adventure. But then also we see her as a brown, uh, sorry, a green-skinned slave girl who's dancing, and he cannot resist her charms. There's that. Then she also plays a woman who is back from his home town and they're riding out on their horses together and a couple other different scenarios here and there again it's all done to seduce him to get him to procreate with his female it's about the enterprise crew getting their captain back and ultimately they do get their captain back but the aliens on this planet do allow this woman to ha keep a mirage of pike because it turns out there's a lot more to this than you would have expected it wasn't just them coldly wanting him to procreate with her, and as well as just keeping him in a cage. It turns out there's more to this woman's situation and what she actually really does look like than you would expect. So that last moment when you turn around and the image is completely dropped and you see what she really does look like after the accident she was in, that was a big shock. And it makes your eyes open up. So even though I do overall like the story of the cage, I do see why um, the studios did want something different and why Where No Man Has Gone Before was something that appealed to them more and appealed to more masses, because it does. But also, the crew of the Enterprise Where No Man Has Gone Before is a crew that just has a natural more, I think something about it has just a natural more, it, it, a better feel to it. Where we got Captain Kirk, played by William Shatner. Jeffrey Hunter gave a great performance as Pike, but there's something about William Shatner's Captain Kirk that you just get behind. And then you have his second in command now, it is Spock, instead of its number one, played by actress Majel Barrett. And this is where it happened. The, um, the studios told Gene Roddenberry, okay, you can either keep Spock or you can keep number one as Majel Barrett. It's your choice. Now, despite the fact that Gene Roddenberry was actually having an affair with Majel Barrett. He said, nope, I'm choosing Spock. And thank God he did. If you're getting mad at me saying, oh, that's not feminist, okay, hear me out. And what first has to be understood is that initially, women didn't like the idea of number one played by actress Majel Barrett. And people always giving the excuse of, because back then there was no really sense of feminism. There was no idea of feminism. So even though Majel Barrett was made number one to show how, like, yeah, girl power, women did not connect to her. It be, and the excuse is because back then there was no such thing as feminism. Or feminism wasn't as prominent as it is now. Okay, even if that's the case, I do not agree. I understand exactly why women did not like number one played by Majel Barrett. Now hear me out. I think Majel Barrett is a great actress. I actually very much enjoyed her as the nurse and I think she's perfectly fine. But at the same time, there were times where I couldn't help but wonder why she was considered and why she was the main female that this show wanted. There are so many actresses in the industry who, because she's a lovely woman, good actress, but there are many actresses who came and went in Star Trek that were equally as talented and as beautiful as she was. I said, so what is the actual reason for why they wanted Majel Barrett? And I'm like, oh, it's because she was sleeping with Gene Roddenberry. She was. She was sleeping with him. That got her a leg in. And I don't judge her. Like, that's, hey, there's nothing wrong with you, you know, having affairs and romantic, you know, liaisons with um, each people, other people in the industry. I'm not judging. I'm just saying it makes sense to me now, like, why he, why he favored her. Because I'm like, oh, well, they were lovers. It makes sense to me now. But I'm happy Gene Roddenberry did not let his romantic side um, get in the way of hiring Spock. Because Spock was the better character for one reason. Again, I like Majel Barrett as an actress. I have no problems with her. But Majel Barrett, this is why women could not like her. Like, p again, people say it's just there was no feminism or that not that much feminism back then. I think it wasn't that. I think it's just that she's not a likable character. Because she played that female whose idea of professionalism is just standing around and talking like this all the time. She is just a blank slate. And the point of the character was she lacked emotion. But here's the problem. Not many actors and actresses can play characters who don't have emotion and it be enjoyable to watch. Majel Barrett, because of she's not the type of actor or actress who can really do that whole deadpan thing very well, she was boring. Majel was absolutely boring. We women, by our very nature, identify with other women who have personality. 
And that brings me to my first issue. People often get mad at when um, people do not like women in powerful positions. And I'm like, no, people are usually, I mean, again, there are sexist people out there. There are people who are sexist towards women, but more often than not, they don't identify with this woman because it's not enough just to put a woman in a powerful position. You have to give her a character that's likable and women will like her. But if you give a character who, like it is with so many times where the idea of being a strong woman is having no emotion, we women are not going to bond with that because there's nothing to bond to. Majel Barrett was a blank slate, it felt like. And just because you put her in a powerful position, it didn't feel like she ever owned that power or she ever really had any power or she knew how to utilize her power. She just kind of was there. And also... Other people had better ideas than she did, and she was mostly there to say yes or no, or when the cap when Pike was not there, she was just there to confirm what other people said. She was more like a parrot than she was like a, a person with any actual initiative or any drive. She was more responsive and reactive than she was ever proactive. Now, it's not bad to be reactive. For example, other people like the doctor and other characters give good advice to her, um, and she takes it, and that does show strength of character to be able to listen to other people and get their ideas and realize they are giving good ideas and they are giving good suggestions, I'm going to take that suggestion. That takes a lot of strength. But when you are in command, it's not just about you taking other suggestions and then just, you know, confirming it's a good idea. It's good to also have ideas of your own every now and again as well. So listen to other people, but also have a voice that where other people want to hear you. And number one, played by Majel Barrett, she was dull, she didn't do much, she mostly was just there to, maybe, in, they also said how intelligent she was. We, she, we only see her be intelligent once when she deduces when a characters are talking about Adam and Eve. But that's about it. We don't really see any insight or intelligence to her. We're told she's intelligent, but we don't actually see it. And that's the thing about women. You can't just write women in powerful positions and expect people to say, oh yeah, awesome women. You have to write her correctly in that powerful position. You have to make her relatable. You have to make her just enjoyable to watch. And the fact is, number one, Majel Barrett, I, people are probably going to disagree with me. Like people who love Majel Barrett are like, oh, she was awesome, what are you talking about? She's awesome because you like her, not because she was actually awesome in that role. It's... It can't just be about putting a woman in a powerful place. It's about how you write her in that powerful place. And we have to, by the end of the first pilot, we have to get the feeling there's more to her than just the deadness. And say what you will about another thing about it. That's why Leonard Nimoy was excellent as Spock. A much better character and why Gene Roddenberry chose Leonard instead of choosing the woman he was sleeping with. Even though he liked her, and again, I am not judging her there. I understand. Hey, Majel, you do what you do. You are not a slut. You're not anything. No. Just saying. It takes a lot of, like, preference for a character to choose a guy, a random guy, over the girl you are romantically involved with. It shows how much you really do believe in this actor, for obvious reason. Leonard Nimoy... From the very first time you see him, first, he has the face and the body to really pull off a character who lacks emotion. His face just naturally is compelling to look at, but also the way he talks. Leonard Nimoy, playing Spock, always talked in a way that made you lean forward and want to listen to him. He knew how to speak and had a beautiful voice, whereas Mitchell Barrett, as number one, just talks like this, says things like this, okay, I answer like this. It's not that enjoyable, whereas when Spock is talking, even though he's a character that has no emotion because of his species, he does speak in a way that does give you a sense that there's something underneath, and there's something in his eyes, too. Like when he says, and where no man has gone before, he says, because she feels, and I don't. He, there, just because his character lacks emotion doesn't mean it has to always lack animation. And he can react to things with his face as an intellectual reaction. It's just not an emotional reaction. And Leonard Nimoy was perfect for the non-emotional cerebral character as opposed to number one because of that. It's all down to, when you've got characters like that, it's down to the actor and actress. And the fact is, the way number one was written, that's why you had that situation where 
women did not like, you know, number one. It wasn't just the idea of feminism wasn't that big yet. It was that she's not a character that's relatable. You got to make women relatable if you want to write strong women. That's the way it is. And Pike, again, Jeffrey Hunter did a good performance as Pike, but back to Kirk, I'm happy that we got Captain Kirk instead. And William Shatner did play Kirk because he had a natural energy that Jeffrey did have, but something Bill just had that more of a charm. And, again, Jeffrey Hunter is a great actor, gone too soon. And the reason why we get Kirk instead of Pike is because I think there was like a... Jeffrey Hunter was not going to get like movie credits or wasn't going to get paid enough. Whatever reason, he just chose not to do it. And eventually, it landed on um, William Shatner as Captain Kirk, just as Spock landed on Leonard Nimoy, despite the fact that a couple different actors were asked to play Spock instead of Leonard first. So William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy, they actually were um, like second or third options. But thank God, they it landed on them anyway. And the concept of the cage, while it's again a very good story, I do like it fit into the menagerie as a two-parter and given more of um, have a, something canvassing it, something encompassing it, another overarching story to give it more than just what it is. I actually think it did work better in the menagerie. Other people are going to disagree with me on that. And I do see why, even though I did like the actor who played the doctor in this, I do see why they eventually went a different path and cast DeForest Kelly as Bones to get a more youthful doctor in there. I do see why they kind of did that in the end, ultimately. But The Cage. This is my overall concept of it. I think overall, again, it is a good story. Very good story, but I'm happy with the framing it was given later on in season one. And overall, I do like it. The cast is overall very good, but I do like where the show eventually landed instead. So guys, this is my video on the cage. Hope you guys, you know, enjoyed yourselves. Um, I don't know if you are. I, I always have very controversial opinions on things. But either way, just thank you so much for stopping by. Guys, nice talking to you.